In a remarkable development, astronomers have announced the discovery of a celestial object unlike any we've encountered before. Not only is it notable for its size and position in the solar system, but it also emits a type of radiation that appears to be highly unusual, possibly even artificial in nature. Could this be a sign that we're closer than ever to discovering life beyond Earth? Could this discovery force us to rethink what we know about our cosmic neighborhood? Let's journey into this fascinating chapter in space exploration. A mission of firsts in 2007, a spacecraft called Dawn was launched with an ambitious goal, to study two of the largest bodies in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. This region, once considered a vast zone of debris, holds remnants from the earliest days of the solar system. Dawn was the first mission to orbit two extraterrestrial targets, starting with the giant asteroid Vesta before heading to its primary target, Ceres, the belt's largest resident. What made Dawn especially unique was its use of ion propulsion, a slow but highly efficient system that allowed it to enter and leave orbits that would be impossible with traditional chemical engines. After 14 months exploring Vesta, Dawn set course for the icy world of Ceres. The arrival at a frozen giant Ceres, first observed in 1801, had long remained a mystery. Though it was initially considered a planet, it was later reclassified as a dwarf planet due to its size, about 950 kilometers in diameter. Before dawn, the best images of Ceres were low-resolution captures by the Hubble Space Telescope, leaving much to the imagination. But when dawn finally reached Ceres in 2015, the curtain was pulled back. For the first time, humanity saw this enigmatic world up close. What it revealed stunned scientists. The bright spots that defied explanation among the first images sent back were glowing patches dotting the surface, especially inside a large crater later named Decatur. These bright spots gleamed against the otherwise dark and dusty terrain. Theories flourished. Could they be ice fields reflecting sunlight? Mineral deposits? Something artificial? As image resolution improved, scientists noticed the brightness came from clusters, not single sources. Detailed analysis suggested these spots were likely salt deposits, possibly left behind when salty water, or brine, reached the surface and evaporated. This hinted at internal processes still active inside Ceres, possibly involving cryovolcanism, ice volcanoes that spew water and chemicals instead of molten rock. This was a revelation. Far from being a dead, frozen rock, Ceres was proving to be geologically complex, and possibly still active. A world with a watery past, and maybe more Ceres's surface composition was unlike most other objects in the asteroid belt. It contained not only rock and dust, but significant amounts of water ice, carbonates, and clay-like minerals. Even more compelling was the presence of ammonia-bearing compounds, materials usually found in the colder outer reaches of the solar system. This raised a fascinating idea. Perhaps Ceres didn't form where it is now. It may have originated farther out and drifted inward. The internal structure of Ceres is equally curious. Models suggest a porous outer layer, a slushy ice-rich mantle, and a denser rocky core. The combination of heat from early radioactive decay and the presence of ammonia could have allowed briny liquids to exist below the surface, even in relatively recent times. The cryovolcano mystery at Cater Crater, where the brightest spot, called Cerealia Facula, lies, became a focal point of the mission. The area known as SP5 showed signs of change over time, possibly from repeated brine outflows. These variations hinted at ongoing subsurface activity. The possibility that Ceres may still be alive geologically turned this icy body into one of the most intriguing targets in the solar system. These features weren't isolated. Bright deposits were found in numerous other locations, suggesting that cryovolcanic activity might be more widespread than originally believed. It challenged the long held idea that small worlds like Ceres were inert relics of the past. Instead, they might still be evolving. Rethinking the solar system the discoveries made by NASA's Dawn mission have had ripple effects far beyond the orbit of Ceres. What began as an ambitious investigation of a minor body in the asteroid belt has evolved into something much greater, a challenge to our long-standing assumptions about planetary formation, internal activity, 
and the potential for life in unexpected corners of our solar system. Ceres, long dismissed as a frozen, unremarkable rock, now appears to be a key to unlocking the mysteries of many other icy worlds. With its unusual combination of minerals, subsurface water, cryovolcanism, and chemical complexity, Ceres resembles not just an asteroid or a dwarf planet, but something in between. It bridges the gap between rocky inner planets and icy moons like Europa and Enceladus, where subsurface oceans may also exist. The presence of ammonia-rich clays, carbonate salts, and a possible briny mantle suggests that Ceres underwent a much more dynamic and watery evolution than previously thought. If salty water still circulates beneath its crust, insulated by a porous surface and warmed by residual heat or radioactive decay, then conditions may exist that are suitable, at least theoretically, for microbial life. What's even more compelling is that this kind of environment aligns closely with what astrobiologists consider potentially habitable, a source of liquid water, chemical nutrients, and protection from harmful radiation. Unlike Earth-like planets that orbit within the habitable zone of their stars, bodies like Ceres may host habitable niches, deep underground, far from the sun, sustained not by sunlight but by internal heat and chemistry. If life, or the building blocks of life, could form on Ceres, it would mean that habitability is not a rare phenomenon, but one that could emerge in cold, dark places throughout the cosmos. And if it could happen on Ceres, it might also happen on Europa, Enceladus, Titan, or even Pluto. This changes everything we thought we knew about where life could exist. Ceres has shown us that the outer solar system is not just a graveyard of ancient ice, but a collection of complex, evolving worlds that may still be active and alive. A mission that changed everything when Dawn launched in 2007, few could have predicted just how revolutionary its mission would become. Designed to explore the largest objects in the asteroid belt, Vesta and Ceres, Dawn didn't just collect data. It redefined what we understand about the solar system's middle frontier. Armed with cutting-edge ion propulsion technology, Dawn became the first spacecraft to orbit two different extraterrestrial bodies. It spent over a year at Vesta, capturing extraordinary images of its rugged surface, before setting off on a multi-year journey to Ceres. Upon arrival in 2015, it began a low, looping descent into Ceres's orbit, gathering high-resolution images, spectroscopic data, and measurements of gravity and magnetism. What it found exceeded expectations. Ceres was not a quiet, static remnant of the early solar system. It was a living geological world, marked by mysterious bright spots, possible brine flows, and the traces of ancient ice volcanoes. The spacecraft's observations revealed a landscape shaped by both collisions and internal forces, proof that even small planetary bodies can evolve in complex, active ways. By the time the mission concluded in late 2018, Dawn had transformed into a silent sentinel, locked in orbit around Ceres with its fuel depleted. Though it no longer transmitted data, the legacy of its journey lives on. Scientists continued to sift through its vast library of information, uncovering new clues with each analysis. Every spectral reading, topographic scan, and image still holds secrets waiting to be decoded. More than just a mission to map the unknown, Dawn gave us a new framework for understanding the solar system. It helped break down the traditional boundaries between asteroids, comets, and dwarf planets, showing that the lines between these categories are not always clear. It taught us that water is more widespread than we assumed, and that where there is water, there might also be life. The story of Ceres is no longer just about a single object. It's a window into a much broader truth. That the solar system is not finished changing, and neither is our understanding of it. With future missions being planned and telescopic data continually advancing, Ceres will likely remain a prime target for exploration. The question is no longer whether there is something to learn from Ceres. It's how much more it has to